Hi, good evening, Mr. Shri Kumar. Good evening, ma'am. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you doing? Doing good, doing good. <laughs> thank you for accepting our invitation and coming pleasure. on to the Skillax Industry Connect event. Pleasure, pleasure. Mm -hmm. I think we'll need to wait for Purima may have mentioned because yeah. students will be just joining. So we'll give them that's about okay, another okay. minute or so. Yeah, yeah. Minute or two. Yeah. <clears throat> I have a huge network issue at home for the last two, three days. Oh, I've not it? repaired it. So that's why I'm joining from I, my I mobile. Too. I too am logged in from home. But uh, ha, ha, ha. I think it's okay, reasonably okay here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yes, it's fine. No, so usually we use the laptop to join because it's it's wider, get a better screen, correct, but correct. Uh, not able to. <clears throat> fine. Uh, what is the final registration count here? Purnima. Uh, yeah, wait a moment. So there'll be some here, some will be probably on the YouTube stream. Oh, is it going on live on YouTube? Hmm. Yes. Uh, it's 86. So I think by another month, one minute or so, I think we can probably start, right? Otherwise it get late. Uh, shall we start now? Yeah, yeah, please. Okay, yeah. So, uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, we're here for the 19th episode of our Industry Connect series. And uh, today, we have a very special guest with us today. 
uh, he is the center head of Tata Alexi Trivandrum, and he will be uh, here to guide us through the topic Adapt and Evolve, Future Demands. So uh, with pleasure, I welcome Mr. Sri Kumar V to this session. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Uh, to give an introduction about the speaker, I welcome Mr. Anand Emmas, uh, General Manager and Head of Product with Skillex. Welcome, sir. Uh, finally, I welcome all the other students who are present here today. So uh, let's make this an interactive session. And uh, students, one more thing, uh, we'll be sharing a Google form at the end of the session. Uh, so please fill in that to uh, get your certificate of participation. Over to you, Anand, sir. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, Purnima. So uh, once again, uh, welcome all uh, to this uh, evening and uh, 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 our Industry Connect series. So uh, the purpose behind uh, 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 this initiative from Skill Access that uh, you know we want to try and give as much opportunity for our uh, you know young graduates uh, to uh, get themselves exposed to uh, uh, industry, how you know what happens in the industry, how. Uh, uh, you know how to prepare for your transition from campus life to corporate life. Uh, so uh, in, you know, try to give uh, opportunities for everyone to interact with uh, leaders uh, from the industry. Uh, in fact, uh, um, um, uh, in, in during my time, uh, we used to get uh, very little such opportunities. So these are wonderful times uh, uh, to be a student. So. Um, uh, I hope uh, uh, you will also uh, enjoy and uh, uh, also find this uh, useful. So uh, uh, today we have a very special uh, person um, uh, with us, uh, uh, you know, Mr. Sri Kumar. We um, he is the center head of uh, Tata Alexi. You know, you might know that it is one of the uh, in the largest. Uh, 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 in, in a company with one of the largest presence in Kerala, and it is also a, a, a global leader in various engineering um, uh, services. So uh, he has been with uh, Tata Alexi for a long time as its uh, center head, and also you know appropriate uh, to uh, the uh, subject today about uh, adapt and evolve. You know, he also has a uh, in a background which reflects that uh, ethos. Uh, so, starting as a, 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 a training, uh, getting trained in mechanical engineering, and uh, 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 then uh, uh, in a starting career in Godrej and Boys, and uh, uh, in, in uh, marketing, and then various roles, and then uh, you know being the center head in an IT. Uh, uh, company, so it, it's um, uh, uh, all about how we evolve, and you know, uh, 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 and that space of uh, change, everything as you all know, uh, has been increasing over the years. So we will uh, get to hear from uh, Mrs. Sri Kumar uh, today how uh, uh, his views on that, and also I also need to add that uh, Mrs. Sri Kumar has been. Uh, uh, face of uh, the IT industry in uh, Trivandrum and Kerala, uh, you know, one as his, uh, in, in his role in the GTEC, which is the collective of uh, Technopark uh, companies and, you know, in various committees and uh, 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 where uh, the Kerala IT industry is represented, he has been uh, a familiar face. So, uh, uh, you know, we have a very appropriate person today to talk about all these. Uh, so, without much ado, I think uh, I will uh, 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 invite uh, Mrs. Sri Kumar to uh, uh, take four. So, uh, over to you, sir. So, you're on mute, sir. Oh, sorry. I'm so sorry. Um, thank you. Thank you so much for that generous introduction. So, uh, as you were talking about my profile, I also look back at what I was doing for the last 33 years after my college days. So, so sudden glimpse of what, what happened uh, during the last three decades uh, in the industries, in the 
academia, how we were uh, taught in colleges and how today uh, the curriculum is being followed or what extra activities happen in, in campuses. It's all a, a beautiful, uh, what do you call, uh, thought. So I'll just uh, make this a very uh, informal kind of uh, evening session. After a day's hard work, uh, maybe all the students and people in the call, let's let's take a bit of time uh, to chit chat and, and talk about what's happening around. How do we uh, better place ourselves uh, to, to adapt ourselves uh, into the new scenarios? It, uh, I wouldn't prefer to make it a very formal kind of uh, presentation, although I have a small presentation with me. Let me try to, uh, to present that. It is. It is. Uh, I think uh, the, the sharing is not happening. It's. It's still not showing. Right. Hello, Purnima or Anand? Can you check? Uh, Shri Kumar is trying to share his presentation. Okay. The share uh, button is still, yeah, still yeah. Uh, blank. Uh, yeah, we, we are trying to fix that. <clears throat> so while while we fix that, uh, I'll just uh, before we start the formal uh, what do you, what do you call a, a PowerPoint, uh, the PowerPoint presentations were a, were a big fancy during our days. Today it's become more of a regular routine tool, or rather people are now bored of PowerPoint presentations. Once you start a PowerPoint, people will start oh God knows when this is when this is going to stop. So so it's more of. Uh, uh, a, a kind of formal uh, formality today. I was remembering those times when we came out of engineering colleges. I came out of Trivandrum Engineering College way back in 1988. Those days, computers were still coming into the country. So uh, I did my mechanical engineering and we had this Fortran 4 as our first uh, language, programming language uh, those days. And that was in the, I remember in the final year or pre-final uh, year. And even then uh, there were, there was hardly any, any presence of a computer in the campus. And uh, suddenly uh, in CET, uh, some computers were purchased. And uh, it was placed in one of those rooms in the ground floor, which was heavily air conditioned. Uh, it was chilling inside those rooms. And four or five computers, normal desktop computers, were placed there uh, on a LAN. I don't, I don't think there was a LAN in those days. It was it, those were standalone machines placed there. Uh, Windows was still not there. Unix was running on them, and uh, and then uh, what what in our computer um, classes, in our Fortran classes, our professor would go take us there, and we had to remove our shoes uh, before entering. Most of the time, we were not allowed to enter. Also, the door was just opened and. And from the outside uh, area, the, the professor would tell us what you see as a rectangular box is called the CPU. And what you see as a screen is called the monitor. And the keyboard is in front of it. And this is how you operate a machine. So that was the computer class of the 80s. Uh, I'm talking about 1988. So and even the professors, there weren't many professors who could uh, who could speak anything um, on, on computer. So we were just coming into the uh, the era of, of computing and in, into the era of uh, technology through electronics. What happened in Kerala those days was the Keltron, the evolution or the starting of uh, the electronics revolution by Keltron. But unfortunately, uh, Kerala couldn't uh, 
continue the the the, the revolution that Keltron started those days. Keltron was a pioneer those days in the country also. If, uh, people those days would remember that there was no other state in the country which had something equivalent of Keltron and Maharashtra started later on. Um, but there were very few states in the country which had something similar to Keltron. Had Keltron been nurtured and brought up, it would have changed the entire um, landscape of Kerala with a lot of uh, electronic manufacturing happening here. Those, those are days where nothing in electronics or nothing in computers were were there. We all depended on uh, on manual computing, manual calculations. Let me uh, sir, can you uh, check uh, if it's uh, come back on? We have enabled it. Still, it is not sharing the screen. Oh. Um, it is still not sharing. It, it's not giving the share option at all. Oh. Uh, we have. Uh, it was actually enabled uh, earlier itself, and mm -hmm. we tried. Shall, to I, shall I do one thing? Shall I log out and log in once again? Mm -hmm. Maybe this. That's, is that's how. That that's, how that's how. That's how we do always. <laughs> no reboot. So yeah. log, in, log out and log in once again. I don't know, uh, but then I, I don't know. Uh, let's not go behind it now. And as oh, I said earlier, PowerPoints are always boring. So <laughs> I, I'll run. I'll run the PowerPoint here and uh, talk on I, the side. I, I could to... suggest what I was going to suggest is maybe uh, you could just mail it to Purnima if ah, she would. I can do that. I can do that. So that yeah. So while you're ah, wiping up maybe, there, yeah. okay, that should be fine. Purnima will be able to present it. Uh, go, Anand. Yeah, uh, one of us will do that. Yeah. One second, one second. I have sent it to Bonima.
yes sir i got it. so as i was uh, speaking uh, how we evolved from those days to to the current uh, scenario in, in in the in the state and in the country <clears throat> today uh, a young child maybe from the age of 1 has an electronic device in hand and that is the huge difference of what we are talking from the 80s to the 2024 in a span of about 3 or 4 decades we are having electronic gadgets all around and we are all connected some way or the other to the entire uh, world connectivity the global connectivity uh, i wanted to uh, focus this uh, this session on on how we transform ourselves from the campuses to the opportunities of the corporate world but <coughs> today it's becoming very obsolete uh, you talk about this today another 2 years whatever maybe we have discussed today becomes slightly obsolete and another 4 or 5 years it becomes totally obsolete it it becomes very absurd also uh, in fact uh, uh, we at uh, at gtech where we have the which which is the industry body and when we have sessions inside gtech we always uh, talk about this on how things are becoming obsolete things are changing fast and how do we adapt ourselves as industry leaders or we call ourselves industry leaders and we ourselves are finding it very difficult to adapt uh, to the changing environment around us uh, so the screen is up yeah yeah i uh, thank you thank you so much uh, so uh, this is always a changing world the world is uh, fast changing and uh, it's not in the in the area of uh, academics or in the area of industry or in uh, technology or uh, even even the the happenings around the world if you see the 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 philosophies are changing the politics is changing uh, the the world uh, economics is changing global uh, geopolitical situations are changing day by day some of them are really very harsh to imagine even uh, we'll move on yeah please can we change so uh this is what i said there is a lot of shift happening the automation digital platforms uh i was uh, i whenever i go to the campuses i speak to the uh, to the campus uh, faculty members to the to the heads of the institutions uh, what is becoming more uh, difficult Uh, is for the older generation the previous generation to adapt to the ever changing newer uh, technologies or the newer situations the gen z or the new generation uh, quickly uh, in in a, in a flip they they just adapt and and uh, and learn and and take take over the the the, the newest in the in the uh, in the global uh, scenario so what happens uh, in in the us or in the europe uh, is here with the youngsters uh, the very next day as we as we start our days but but then uh, uh, business leaders politicians uh, other leaders also have to have to adapt themselves because you need to have uh, governance you need to have uh, address the changing situations and evolve and adapt quickly it's not about uh, adapting in once in 5 years or once in 10 years changing but today you need to quickly adapt and change yourselves and your uh, governance policies your regulations uh, so that you are you are Uh, ahead of time or you are at least at par with what's happening globally <clears throat> please we always talk about this whenever a new technology comes we say it's a disruption when the computers came we had demonstrations against computers people came to the roads with with the stop machines smashed them on the roads and said it's going to disrupt our our normal life so these are our our enemies and these are challenges and let's let's not uh, take uh, all these uh, so called uh, progressive uh, achievements it is going to disrupt it's going to kill jobs it's going to make our life very hard 
But disruption can always be an opportunity. We have seen that over the last two, three decades, we have seen that all these web substance created opportunities in um, in 2x, 3x times. Yeah. <clears throat> One small capsule is internet has destroyed 5 lakh jobs in France in the previous years, in the 15 years, but created 1.2 million immediately and a net addition of 7 lakhs. So, for every job lost, there was 2.4 jobs created for every jobs destroyed or every jobs which went off. They never went off. I mean, they were not destroyed. They only changed. People who got, uh, who were easy to, or who were quick to adapt, they, they seized the opportunity. Uh, ideally, uh, the world, uh, all of us human beings, we are tuned to be very competitive. We always are competitive to live. We feel we have to compete to live. But as, civil, as civilizations or societies progress, we find that we need to cooperate to live. From com competition to cooperation is the civilization index. So uh, whenever there is a there is a new advancement happening, which will is which is which is going to be termed as a disruption, people cooperate. Technologies, nations co co cooperate, corporations co cooperate, and then change those disruptions into into opportunities. Today we talk about AI, machine learning, all the automation and the artificial intelligence that's going to bring in disruptions, but it will create more jobs. Only thing is we need to learn them. I, I was telling somebody recently that uh, irrespective of whether you are a fresher out of college or whether you are the vice president in an organization, what you need to do now in the coming years is unlearn. Whatever you learned may have to be unlearned. We have to relearn and then adapt. Unlearn, relearn and adapt is a slogan which is going to take through the next few years. Otherwise, we, we slowly get outdated and we slowly get pushed out of the system. Please. Twenty twenty five is going to be, or this decade, or this uh, next five years is going to be the capability building. That is going to be the new normal. Uh, we need to actually. This is uh, told by uh, Srimati Dramjani Ghosh, the president of NASCOM, uh, in her uh, address. Uh, she was stressing uh, mostly on the four Rs, which will which will take us through this uh, turbulent times, or which will help us succeed to this through these disruptive times. So she was telling you, you need to reshape, accelerate uh, transition to AI, reskill, make all, uh, all all over the world, world over. Uh, if you look at uh, governments, if you look at industries, if you look at the leading. Uh, the big giants in the in the industry, whatever industry, be, be it uh, uh, infrastructure, be it power, be it uh, bio, um, bio, uh, what, what do you call um, uh, pharmaceuticals, or be be it IT the, itself. We all have to follow this uh, four R's: reshape, reskill, rewire, and raise IP. The last one is very important in the coming years. Industries and individuals and technocrats need to have work towards research and development and making their own IPs available. These are all, uh, uh, um, what do you call, uh, very mundane, very um, straight, what do you call, uh, formal uh, slides that you see here. Uh, I wouldn't take uh, much of the time with the slides like this, but then let us go into uh, the, the real crux of the matter today. How do you evolve from the academia into a corporate environment. So I'll rush through these slides quickly. Uh, now, if you look at what is happening in 2023 and 2024 worldwide, uh, the, the tech industry or the what, basically your opportunities, be whether you study in an arts college, whether you study in the science college, whether, whether you do engineering or diploma, whatever you do, finally, there is going to be some kind of technology uh, addition to whatever to the jobs that you do. Every job is going to be technically uh, toned up or covered. You need to have access to our basic uh, uh, knowledge of basic technology to work in any environment. It can be in the government, it can be in the private sector, it can be in, in, in any kind of uh, environment. Today, doctors are more, more of engineers. Today, pharmaceuticals are more of data science. So, so, so you need to have a lot of uh, tools at your fingertips to survive in this highly competitive world that is emerging. So whatever you study as your basic, whatever is your passion, 
you have to be in touch with technology. You have to get yourself immersed in technology to live also, to probably peacefully live also. You need to have some kind of technology savviness in you. So, uh, and, and engineering research and development is going to take you into that kind of an environment where you, can, you cannot stay aloof from all these happenings that are happening. Can we proceed? Yeah. We can. These are all, um, what do you call it, snapshots of what's happening through these years. Uh, this is some. This is a very important slide which I wanted to uh, show everyone. Uh, normally, people from uh, people like me who work in the industry and who are part of the industry body also, uh, we uh, attend lot of uh, lot of sessions uh, on the routine. Uh, so, I would have. Probably in the last two years, attended uh, more than two or three sessions every month, uh, conducted by various agencies and by various uh, leaders. One session, which uh, recently, which I attended uh, last month in Trivandrum, was this session by uh, Mr. Pramod Verma. Dr. Pramod Verma is the de facto CTO of uh, of India. He is a big chief architect behind our UPI. Our uh, ONDC, our digi lockers, whatever you hear uh, from in the in the UPI uh, world, Aadhaar. Uh, he is the chief architect which created all these tools and applications, which cater to millions millions of population. These are public digital infrastructure, DPI, digital public infrastructure. He is the chief architect. He came to Trivandrum for a for a day, and he spent uh, the time with. Uh, the, the community here and the first one one and a half hours of his presentation or one hour of his presentation is extremely uh, what do you call interesting and it created a lot of interest among all sections of the of the community leaders uh, from 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 uh, people who were considered to be star wars in the industry to to the to the uh, students who came out of colleges to the young entrepreneurs who were Startup owners, everybody were, was keenly interested. Why? Why? How did he create this interest? Normally, a session becomes very boring and very, very uh, redundant or very um, uh, an attention span of a person is for a session is about uh, twenty or twenty-five minutes. Beyond that, nobody wants a, wants to continue. But uh, Dr. Pramod was talking for close to an hour. He started by saying that he'll talk for twenty minutes, but he went on and on for an hour. And uh, many of us uh, who ended the same session went back home and saw the entire talk once again on YouTube. It's still there on the YouTube. Uh, I would request people to who have not attended or not heard the session to please uh, do this because he created so much of an interest and he gave a broad, uh, a very clear outline of what happened in the country over the last four or five years in the DPI sector. And there's immense opportunity coming up in the DPI. Um, there is no other country in the world where this DPI has been duplicated in this manner. There is no other country uh, where it, it is like a world record where this kind of a population has been uh, put into or, or adapted or joined into the digital public infrastructure and it's functioning flawlessly. And people simply get, uh, what do you call, um, they ask us when we, when we talk about UPI, how you make GPA payments, how you make phone pay payments cross between bank, the bank transfers happening from your mobile, no other country in the world is, uh, is able to do that. You go to any other developed country, you still have to depend on, on check payments, cash payments, bank transfers. But the, uh, in, in a minute's time, if you transfer from one phone to another, uh, do a bank transfer. Talk about uh, an, a unique ID for all its citizens. Talk about digi lockers. Talk about ONDC which is going to change the entire uh, scenario of online uh, buying and selling. So uh, there are people like this in India who have uh, who, are, who are showing us some some leads on what is going to happen in the future. So this this session is available on YouTube. I would uh, request uh, participants to uh, to to see the session, hear this, hear Dr. Pramodur. And Dr. Pramodur, my has promised to come again to Trivandrum in a couple of months' time. Uh, so he is opening up this this huge opportunity of uh, of implementing DPI and DPG solutions across the world 
and India is going to take the uh, lead in that. So there's a lot of opportunity for Indian companies, for Indian young techies, people who have uh, come out of colleges who want to start something new. Uh, new startups will have a lot of opportunities to deploy these kind of solutions in other geographies, in Europe, in US, in 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 Latin America, in in the uh, Asia Pac region, everywhere, everywhere. This, so. He is now looking for people who can help him implement this in other countries. So this huge opportunity waiting there. So this becomes very, this session becomes very useful for young talents here, people who are eager to pounce upon opportunities. So that's why I put the slide here. There's actually a screenshot. I don't know whether I'm breaching um, uh, copyright laws, but this is the screenshot from the YouTube that he did. I wanted to tell this to the crowd here. Uh, this is a very good session to, to hear and, and see. Please. Uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Pramod Verma. Pramod Verma, incidentally, is from Trivandrum. Uh, he his basic uh, uh, native place is Trivandrum, and but he has been all through his career in in Delhi uh, with the government. Uh, he did his initial stint was in Infosys, but then uh, as Mr. Nathan Delakeni uh, was put in charge of the UPI or the the Aadhaar project, and then uh, Dr. Verma also joined him. Good to good to hear this. Let's go to the next slide. I, uh, I've been in Tata Alexi for the last 13 years uh, and uh, been working uh, in non-IT companies since 1989. Uh, but the latter half of my career, I have uh, I've gone through a lot of changes and shifts and, and understood a lot about what's happening. It's learning all the time for me. I don't think that after 33 years of working or after some 20, 22 years in the IT industry, I have learned all that's happening here. No. I still am a learner. I am open to learning anything new that's that's coming to me. And here in this industry, which we should be always aware as students and, 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 and people who want to come into the uh, IT industry or the technology world, every day there's something new to learn and we always should be open to learn. And we should always understand that we, the youngsters, today's youngsters are far ahead in, in ad 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 updating themselves about what's happening newest in the world. We are always behind. And this slide talks about something called GTEC Mu Learn. GTEC is an organization, it's an association of IT companies in Kerala. It is an association of 285 IT companies. And um, this association uh, primarily uh, has been there for the last 20 uh, years. Ever since we had Technopark here, the association is also there. Uh, the association aims at uh, bringing to the community whatever uh, the positive impacts of IT can 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 be given to the community. Association brings in, uh, looks at, aims at bringing it to the entire community and its ecosystem. We call it an ecosystem because there are a lot of stakeholders in the ecosystem. The students are there. The primary stakeholders in the ecosystem are the students. There are faculty members, colleges, universities, companies, uh, think tanks in the in the country, scholars and mentors who can help us. So all of this put together is called the IT ecosystem. That is what we call the IT ecosystem. It's not about more and more companies coming here. It's it's more, more and more about developing this ecosystem and making it rich. So with that intention, we we created something called GTEC Mulan. Most of the students would, would be familiar with it. I don't need to introduce this um, GTEC Mulan to the students here. But for those of you who are new to it, I'll quickly explain what is GTEC Mulan and how it will help you in shaping yourselves ready or making yourself ready for the industry after your college. GTEC MuLearn is nothing but a platform created by GTEC. It is a platform available for anybody. It is not only for students. It is for anybody who is interested in upcoming technology, in the developing technology arena. Who interested can join GTEC GTEC MuLearn. GTEC MuLearn is absolutely free. There are no charges to, uh, to, to it. It is free for all. At least it will remain free for the for the beneficiaries in the years to come. So, um, you will learn uh, is a place where you meet everybody in the ecosystem. As I said, it, it has got uh, students. Today, it's got 30,000 students enrolled on, on, on New Learn. Uh, it's got about 150 colleges. It's got all the universities uh, aligned to it. It's got industry <coughs> partners in it. So, what happens when, when a student comes into New Learn? That's a, that's a very um, common question that that, uh, that we face uh, when we talk about Mulan into the, into the student community in the academia. A student coming into Mulan comes into, a, into an exciting environment where he can find out his interest group there. 
he has got an interest in ai there is an interest group there he has got an interest in web development he has got a, a interest group there he is interested in music there is a there could be a interest group there he is joining an interest group where he is his passion he identifies there and joins there in the interest group and starts experiencing peer learning nobody teaches anything on mu learn it is peer learning and experiencing and experimenting and going into different stages earning your karma points and coming out successful out of mu learn you either will be hired by a company or you become an entrepreneur so this has been the story till now people who have come out successfully students who have come out successfully outside out of mu learn have either been hired by some company from in the industry or they have become entrepreneurs all the students need is a uh, an interest to come and participate all the learning happens there organically is through peer learning nobody is there to teach you but there are a lot of mentors there are a lot of scholars a lot of people who can guide you when you are in a uh, in a difficult situation in a, in a when you have a doubt when you have a technical problem there are people there uh, who can help you there so i just want to talk about mu learn but because it's good, it's, it's an absolutely free of cost platform available for students today to adapt and evolve themselves to the to the changing requirements of society a lot of stories inside mu learn which are very thrilling where people with no knowledge of any technology have come learned on mu learn and competed with world uh, with with global teams and came out victorious there are stories about uh, student groups who have gone and uh, uh, taken part in the hackathon by meta and earned uh, the first uh, one that earned a place there with Uh, securing a cash award of 18 lakhs so that was a very successful success story inside new learn so these kind of uh, 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 platforms are available today for for students new learn has no comparisons to any other platforms available anywhere it is a unique idea it is all about coming together and learning together and enjoying the 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 the, the, the face in, in new learn there is nobody to supervise you there is nobody to uh, take you around but you yourself navigate and find your uh, uh, excitement there can we can we proceed and the vision is democratize decentralize and digitize learning we our vision in mu learn is to uh, available it is to make available knowledge technology to all the people across the state today we are limited to kerala but as we speak we are talking to people outside kerala we are talking to people outside the country where collaborations are possible it's going to be a, a huge revolution from new learn in the coming months that you will see because the the kind of uh, the kind of knowledge that will come into new learn is going to be absolutely huge and is going to be a platform where people can come collaborate work and and uh, um, and develop themselves and make their careers and make their companies and uh, show the world how technology can be effectively utilized without classrooms classrooms are always very boring i would say still now as a even as a parent i would say classrooms are very boring and we always were most of the time were out, outside classes can we these are some of the um, foundations on which we believe in ngtech mu learn we believe that uh, all of the ethical standards need to be followed there has to be a, a sense of community and its upbringing inside inside mu learn quickly we'll we'll go go to the next slide there are campus chapters there where you join together now today today the situation is that colleges are competing a college will always compare with another college on how many karma points how many students are enrolled in mula so it's becoming a competition among colleges we have pro, the mula has got programs for faculty members too we have faculty contests so the faculty members and the colleges are actively participating there it, it's a kind of it's a kind of place with a lot of excitement and fun next slide please yeah please this is what i this is a summary of what i told uh, over the last few minutes we'll i quickly uh, take you through some of these slides uh, which is uh, which, which are a glimpse of uh, what is going to happen ahead i am not uh, 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 a complete techno techno try to tell you what will exactly happen but these are these are the assumptions and presumptions of what's going to happen over the next few years maybe one or two years or three years maximum uh, for a couple of years we none of us know what's going to take, take uh, come into this world as a revolution but from what's happening today 
there are some presumptions and assumptions on what's going to happen in the next couple of years. These are, these are information which is available to you all, already in the public domain and you would be better equipped than me. Uh, you would probably know better as students who, who have all of it on your fingertips. You would know all this and you would always feel that, oh, we know all this. Slide, please. And these are some of the uh, pointers for what you could uh, look at for your for building your career, for, for doing something on your own. Today, people talk about AI and machine learning only widely. And the media is also interested in this kind of jargon. But there are other areas where, where a lot of revolution, a lot of changes are going to happen, a lot of opportunities are going to, are going to emerge. Particularly in the in the uh, sustainability and the and the climate change uh, arena, there are, there are a lot of new innovations going to happen. Always the buzzword is going to be the innovation. So uh, to the students, what I need to say is think, innovate, think out of the box. Today, companies are looking for people who, who can think out of the box. When I when when I talk about uh, moving from campus to corporate, um, I will tell you something very interesting. Uh, we have been uh, in Trivandrum for long years. I remember when I joined uh, sometime uh, I, when I joined Tata Lexi sometime in uh, in uh, 2010. Uh, our total strength in Trivandrum was about 850 people. Uh, all of all of them, uh, we primarily are into uh, are into engineering applications. We make uh, applications for the uh, automotive to the automotive in, for the automotive industry as well as to the media industry. Uh, we have other divisions also across uh, India, uh, but what happens primarily in Trivandrum is uh, embedded ele electronic solutions, embedded software solutions, and embedded hardware solutions for the uh, transportation industry as well as for the media industry. So we uh, normally take uh, uh, higher engineers from the computer science and electronics background, but uh, sometimes we hire lower numbers from the other streams too. So since we create embedded solutions for very focused um, domains, uh, there is there is an absolute uh, depth of talent uh, in the state or in the intervandrum who will have domain experience, who will have experience in the industries. So what we normally do, as like any other company, we hire from campuses and then we go for extensive training in in the uh, in the uh, skill sets that we require, and we need to train them in whatever. Uh, domain knowledge, some of some of the domain knowledge that the company has acquired over the years, we give it to the freshers who join and make and equip them so that they are able to perform uh, in solving complex problems inside the uh, organization. The, these two areas, the area the, what I talked about, the automotive and the media are fast evolving um, domains. You see changes happening very fast. I remember my days, my college days or my younger days where we didn't have a television at home. The only electronic item that was at home, and we couldn't call it electronic also because those were valve radios. Uh, they never had any semiconductor in them. So, so that was the only electronic uh, device at home. And then came the black and white televisions with the long uh, suspended pole. I don't know how many of the students here would uh, ever imagine, uh, will be able to imagine any of this, such things. A, a, a ten, 10 foot not 10 foot, some 30 foot long uh, pole on top of our house, holding something called as, a, as an antenna. And some of the antennas were uh, were so huge that we would always fear that the antenna would fall down uh, on the house. So so these kind of antennas were there which could pick up uh, television signals from, from, a, from a television station which was uh, far, far away. And um, these signals, these signals were black and white signals. And then it took a lot of time to convert them into for the color televisions to come in. And those days, the biggest television was a 20-inch CRT television, a cathode ray tube television set, uh, which gave us uh, grainy pictures. From those uh, eras, we suddenly went into the LED screens. We suddenly went into the plasma screens. We then migrated to the LED screens. Today, we talk about 4K, 5K, 8K, what all we talk. Uh, and as we talk, something else is being developed somewhere else. And today, you have flat screens. Television sets that they can be folded and taken somewhere. This can be hung as a screen on the wall. So all of this is happening in the media. We talk about OTTs. We talk about uh, streaming. Uh, we talk about uh, the millions and trillions of uh, content that's available on YouTube. 
we talk about people making a livelihood out of it we so drastic changes have happened, has happened over the last 10 years in the media industry media itself has changed our perception of media was the press we still some of some 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 places we talk about media as press but soon this press is going to die 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 you will not have newspapers uh, after some time you will only have media on on the visual media which will be available as uh, demand beauty on demand and you will see only what is required for you i um, in many households today in developed countries and in kerala or some parts of our country people have stopped watching televisions people are on their own devices handheld devices and people watch only what they are interested in so the kind of change that has happened in this industry and the kind of solutions that are required are enormous and is evolving daily daily is evolving so you require more and more modern solutions for the upcoming days so that's something which we do in the media space in the automotive space we we all studied in engineering about ic engines we studied about the ic engines which are four cylinders which are governors which have a lot of other things all of it mechanical and we went through the mechanical labs where we toiled our day uh, had a lot of grease in our hands and then um, cranked the the large engines called the cooper engines and the marshall engines with our own hands today none of it is required your car has now become more of electric and electronic than mechanical so so the electronics inside a car is uh, uh, it's all of electronics it's about ecus that will run your vehicles it's about lidars and uh, and uh, radars and cameras that will run your autonomous vehicles it's about battery management systems which will which will control your battery uh, outputs so uh, the automotive sector is now slowly into different mode you may not have the subject or the curriculum called ic engines in colleges anymore so so that's how it's evolving fast and quick so there we need to uh, evolve i will i will tell you something very very unique which i normally have uh, has not i have not told anybody else because it, it it might be an embarrassment too i was telling in 19 into uh, in, to, in 2010 uh, when i joined our company had 850 people engineers today we are 3200 uh, and we were when we were hiring from colleges we always used to uh, get disappointed because the first a uh, tier 1 colleges as we call them the ranking according to the ranking of colleges we were always we never considered in this college in, in in those colleges and we were always disappointed and we always thought that we were getting people not the cream of of the of the students not the academically brilliant students no offenses here but students who come out of any college can work in any domain today if they have the adequate uh, technical background but they need to be smart they need to be people who will work smart they are essentially not the people who will have the 9.9 academics no they are people who will adapt and learn and and work smart this these are the qualities required here in industry people who can face failures people who can who will not get embarrassed when the failure strikes them right on their face because you need to create solutions for the upcoming technology uh, situation you will have a lot of bottlenecks you will have you we need people or industry will require people who will face failures with with with, uh, with boldness and think out of the box come up with solutions do act in a team adapt themselves quickly into team form teams that's why we always uh, found that people the youngsters who were very active in college campuses who were very active in conducting um, programs in the colleges who were conducting who were uh, good in arts culture and um, uh, and in uh, conducting sessions in colleges who were always available everywhere in the college who will be the the, uh, the the most visible characters in college they wouldn't be the academically brilliant ones but they fare very well inside industry they are the people who will drive the teams they will fall quickly and adapt to any team they'll think out bring in new ideas they'll think out of the box when there's a situation where you can't move forward they come up with brilliant ideas so these are the people who will fare well in the industry so these are the qualities that you need to develop you need to be smart in your thinking innovative think out of the box speak out whatever you what comes in your mind don't be ashamed of yourself and then uh, that will that will make you that will make you smarter in the industry we need people like that not only us companies need people like that who will be leaders there who will be the smart ones we for the industry basically we don't require too many of these academically uh, ac- academic brilliance here because it's changing every time you whatever you learned in 5 years has become suddenly obsolete in 2 years so whatever you learn we are unlearning and we we will require people who will suddenly learn relearn and adapt and fall into the team and bring up ideas 
It's all about innovation and ideas. Please, I'm, I know I'm running out of time. I'm uh, over shooting the time, but so quickly we'll we'll go into the these these slides are simply some pointers to you on what is required in the coming years. This is known to you. This is in the public domain, but still I repeat this because we should have this in the back of our mind. What's happening elsewhere and how do we adapt? Please, we can switch slides fast. These are some of the opportunities that will come up in the coming years. Some of them. And as we talk, these are changing. Yes. Some of these opportunities, which, which are likely to give you uh, good careers in the, in the changing environment. Content creator might not last long because AI is going to take away all your content creation. But that's not the case. There will be there will be good opportunities for creativity. Because whatever AI we, we talk about, it cannot create creativity. Creativity is something which comes from inside. It has to have the human touch. So be creative people need not worry. Cybersecurity is going to be big time opportunity. Data protection, data security, data privacy, cyber security, data analysis. All of that we talk about artificial intelligence and machine learning is the ground, uh, the bottom line is data. You, if, if there are tools and applications which can handle big data, it's going to be a great opportunity for all of us. And in the upcoming years, we wouldn't require people who can write millions of code. Your efficiency is not writing millions of codes and debugging and quality quality testing it. No. Code will be written by some, some, some of these machines. Renewable energy and sustainability is becoming worldwide because as we talk, we are seeing this climate change and happening and it's going to be a fearsome situation in the coming years. What is What we thought will happen in 2050 is going to happen in the coming years. So climate change, sustainability, renewable energy, all these are areas which is going to bring up a lot of opportunities and people who can innovate, who, people who can come up with brilliant ideas in those sectors are definitely going to succeed. Gaming and esports. This is something which is catching on in the world. Opportunities are there. It is not an essential item, but, but people, there's huge following for gaming and esports. It is catching here in our country too. Today, the government has come up with a policy for it. It's going to subsidize and incentivize whatever new uh, innovations that are going to happen in this area. Keep a watch on what's happening there. All of you I know are, uh, are experts in gaming uh, on the screen. So you love this area. Be innovative. Think what, what can happen next. Acquire some skills and come up with innovative products there. You can become entrepreneurs there. You can become the next industries. Some of these demand skills, you would all know all about it. Why do you adapt yourself from the campus to the to the corporate? There are certain things which are more than technology and more than uh, technical skills and more than knowledge. We need to have some soft skills which will help you succeed in a, in a very competitive environment. Uh, although most of the uh, hiring by the particularly by the IT industry happens from the college campuses, suddenly when you go into the uh, uh, into the companies, into the industrial uh, arena, into the corporate world, we need to change ourselves. It is no more your college. This is a this is a problem faced by many companies in the industry, uh, where they say uh, all of all of the freshers that we recruited are still think that they are in the college, and they behave and they conduct themselves in in the company environment as if they are still continuing in the college campuses. College campuses, as we know, are very vibrant, are always uh, full of action, always full of uh, it's very noisy. It's, it has to be like that. College campuses have to be very vibrant. It has to be very, uh, very action, action packed. But the corporate environment is different because you have a lot of different kind of people there. We have, we have um, customers visiting us. You have very senior leadership uh, sitting there. A lot of um, uh, uh, what you call very critical uh, R&D that happens there. Uh, so it's a, it's a, it's a more of a formal environment there. So we need to adapt ourselves and change ourselves to go into and fit there correctly. If you don't fit there. Whatever you do in the in the industry, you will get sidelined. You will get uh, uh, you will get ranked uh, at a, at a level which is not up to your kind of uh, proficiencies and capabilities. So you should be very careful as students. You should be very careful in your communication, 
in your in your in your dress codes in your in the manner in which you conduct yourself inside the inside the whatever you could do in college cannot be done in in the industry most of it cannot be done in industry uh, the industry requires a certain kind of setting a, kind, a certain kind of uh, ethical and and conduct setting there uh, which has to which will require some kind of tuning and tweaking in your character in your in the way you behave in the etiquettes that you follow uh, in the industry because industry has got a lot of people who were not there in your college uh, and 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 the kind but today the uh, industry will accept and will enable and will uh, and will facilitate uh, a very exciting and and uh, an environment which is fun filled because we know that our 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 uh, Community is full of people who have just come out of college. So there has to be that fun element has to be there. The enjoyment has to be there. The work-life balance has to be there. And uh, the the excitement has to be there. It cannot be very dull environments. It has to be very vibrant, very colorful. But still on top of it, industry has got some governance factors. It has to be ethically correct. It has to be communicating correct. It has to be conducting itself correct. Because we are bound by so many of these factors. Next. A lot of caution has to be uh, uh, exercised when you come into the industry on interpersonal communication. You are talking to people who are di at different levels. People are different. You are talking to your your team leaders. You are talking to your managers. You are talking to their clients. You are talking on the telephone. You are talking on the video call. You are talking on Teams call. You are uh, sometimes uh, directly talking to your clients, your, your customers, uh, and customer is the king in the company. So your interpersonal communication has to be definitely at a def at a different level. Normally, companies have this module of campus to corporate which, and they will train you. But since you have been long time in schools and colleges, uh, your, your basic nature might still linger and will continue in the, in the industry too. But you have to consciously and deliberately uh, consider this and adapt and, and evolve yourself into a different character which will perfectly suit the industry uh, environment. Next Next one, please. This is all basics that we are seeing here. Next one, please. Your body language, your verbal communication, your uh, first impression is all matters. We always see this tendency to escalate problems. Don't run away from problems because problems are your opportunities. If you if you attempt to solve a problem partially too, you are the star in the team. And you are the person who are going to recognize first. So as I said earlier, be smart in the, in the industry. Smart enough to think out of the box, think innovative, come up with new ideas and solutions and solve problems in the industry. Industry challenges, if you are able to handle, you are the best person there. Next one, please. You should be able to work in teams instantly. You have to adapt. You might be ridiculed. You might, you might put up a lot of... Um, um, what do you call uh, silly answers? You might say blunders, but no, no issues. In a corporate environment, there is no issue, even if you say the biggest blunder in the world. That's how you develop. Some of these blunders later on turn out into brilliant ideas. So speak out, adapt yourself, put yourself, throw yourself into teams, and that will that will help you succeed in the industry. Work and enjoy. Work has to be enjoyment. As I said in MuLearn, MuLearn nobody teaches you or keeps you in a classroom. It helps, it gives you an enjoyable and very cheerful environment there. And your workplace also, you need to create that environment. Companies try their best to create create this kind of an environment in their, in their campuses, but you are the people who will make it. You are the people who will make the campuses, the corporate, um, what do you call the, the company campuses, very cheerful. And uh, industry always wants their campuses to be very vibrant and very cheerful and very warm, uh, inviting, enticing uh, environments. Give back something. You feel that you have studied in a college paying your fees. So it's something that you got as a service from the college. But remember, there is a whole ecosystem that's supporting you. It includes a lot of stakeholders. It includes the communities around you who are not able to afford what you were able to. 
So when you join the industry, when you start working, when you start earning, give back to society. I say this particularly because I work in an organization which believes giving back to society as its own, as its business, as important as its business. For your information, the Tata Group is a charitable organization. The entire Tata Group is a charitable organization with 100 plus companies under it. And the biggest conglomerate or the biggest group in, in the country, it believes in giving back to societies as its primary objective. 66% of all profits made by Tata companies go back to societies where they operate. Each one of us, whether we work in Tata companies or in other companies, need to understand that we need to give back to society. Because society has contributed to your development, to whatever you, you become, whatever you, where, whichever ladder you climb up in your careers, society has backed you, which is invisible. You don't see it. It's not tangible. But without the ecosystem and society, you will never would have succeeded. So develop a habit where you will volunteer, where you will give back to society, help others to come, come up. That's all what I wanted to tell you. It's all about becoming socially responsible and technologically available. I wish good luck to all the students here. And whatever I've told you this minimum possible time, my intention was only to create a good ecosystem as a responsible person in the, in the corporate environment. Thank you. I'm open to questions if time permits. Sir, uh, my name is Sandal Kumar from AAA department, sir. Sir, what do you think about uh, uh, practical skills and uh, theoretical skills? What is important? Uh, just we need the theory as a as a foundation. When I when I told earlier uh, that everything is changing and whatever we study becomes obsolete, but what we study in our schools and colleges are our foundation. So you can't discount theory. Theory has to be there. Theoretical think and become innovative because that has to be the foundation in the back of your 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 um, intellectual capital. What you have, what is stored in your brain, what 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 is driving you forward is your foundation that you have learned uh, laid in the schools and colleges. So I I don't discount that. I say that your theoretical base has to be good, sound, but that's not what is uh, absolutely uh, enough to succeed in a corporate life. In a corporate life, you have to be has. I'll tell you an example. Uh, I told you earlier that in our company, we recruit uh, B.Tech uh, degree holders and M.Tech degree holders. But when we started recruiting diploma holders, we found that the diploma students, because they are more hands-on, they, they suddenly uh, uh, have a tendency to become more hands-on and practical. Many a time, the ideas or the solutions or the approach by a diploma holder was better than a B.Tech or an M.Tech holder. Practically on ground, when you work, when you are hands-on, you have, you attain a knowledge which is not obtained by uh, schooling, by classes, by reading. When you are hands-on, you attain a skill which gives you an ability to think innovatively and come up with, with innovative ideas in a problem situation. So practical knowledge is, is much required and it is going to be the practical knowledge base that will help you develop and, and, and uh, succeed in your careers. But theory has to be there. Theory will, will be the basic foundations. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Fine. Thank you. Sir, I have a doubt. Can I ask? Please, please. Sir, uh, as you said, I have went on overview on the U-Land, uh, it's from GTEC, but uh, I have just logged in, but uh, uh, by this U-Land, what I get uh, benefits, sir, whether it will be like courses or I need or uh, interactive from team members. In this college are you? I am from St. Right. Saviour's Catholic College of Engineering. Do you have a Muran chapter there? I think not. So. I don't think. Uh, that's okay. Uh, that, I just wanted to find out whether you have a Muran chapter in your college. But yeah. Muran essentially is a is a platform which is there open for you. 
you need to go into Mule and register and play around. Uh, do you have a Facebook account? Yes, sir. Do you have a, uh, a any other social media account? LinkedIn. LinkedIn. How did you go in there? Mm -hmm. Did anybody tell you about LinkedIn or did anybody... Um, uh, Our college have instructed uh, about the LinkedIn and we have enrolled it. How about Facebook? Facebook. You did on your own, no? I don't know much about Facebook, sir, but I know about LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Did you, are you on uh, Twitter or any other uh, social media handles? No, sir. No. People, generally youngsters, uh, are there on Instagram, on, on Facebook, on, on, on LinkedIn. Why do you go there? Because you are you are there among people who are like-minded. You are there because there are a lot of people there. You are there because you, by being there, you enhance yourself. You are there because you feel that you can express yourself and, and gain knowledge and be um, adapted to the latest by being there. You want to be among the crowd which will benefit you. That is natural human tendency. That's why we went going to the social media, um, all these Instagrams, all these uh, Facebooks and LinkedIn. You need to be among people who are successful, who are who are exciting, who, who can give you great ideas, who can talk to you or who can share knowledge and who can share snippets about what's happening around you. And you were able to participate. That's why we are active in all these areas. Like Facebook, like LinkedIn, you can go into New Learn. Sir, was there any, uh, any interaction from that? Yeah, it is a platform where you have 30,000 students, as I said. They are already there. There are interest groups there. You can you, you can you can decide what is going to be of interest to you and what is going to be a passion for you and what is it that you will pursue as a career. Is it the same interest or is it a different one? Go and see whether it is available in, 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 in Mula. If it is available, there will definitely be a group of people who are working there. You can join them. And then when, when you join them, you are exposed to all the learning in the same area. And then if, if, you, if you don't find an interest group inside New Learn in which you are interested, you can create one. And suddenly you will have a lot of people coming to, along with you. And that interest group will evolve and evolve and do the peer learning and you will, you will find it very exciting. You will have to experience it. If I tell you it doesn't, uh, maybe it will not create that kind of an excitement. You will experience and be excited when you go into it. Yes, sir. I can understand what you say. I'll tell you a small example. In in New Learn student, there is a there is a there is a, a stage where you are asked to type. What is so great about it? I I've been, I've been typing on my keyboard for long years. What why should I type again? New Learn will ask you to go into a typing contest. It will simply ask you to type 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 at your maximum speed. We will feel absurd about it. But that is New Learn is testing your perseverance. Are you able to pursue and pursue and go into it? Muran is testing you. Yes, sir. And one guy in Trivandrum, one of the scholars in Trivandrum, typed at his speed. Next day morning, he gets a call from the Limca Book of World Records saying that you have, you have a world record now. The fastest typing. There is an excitement. So... There are so many of these kind of things. I told you about the Meta Hackathon. Yes. On Spark, uh, nobody had the had the skill sets uh, to, uh, to 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 participate in that. So we were, we asked them, how many of you have a passion to to draw pictures? Fifty or or people said we can do that. Simply draw pictures and post it on Mira. and we took uh, um, uh, some people out of it. And gave them a three day training on Smart Case, Spark HR. And then they participated in the Meta Hackathon. And out of the 200 people who came victorious worldwide, 26 were from Europe. Wow. And they got 18 lakhs as a, as a price, price money. So many of these examples in Europe. Nobody teaches you anything there. Everybody is there to support you. You yourself have to decide what is my passion, what is my interest, and what do I want to do. You want to create a website, you want to do web development, go into MuLearn, find out the interest group. Finally, when you come out of MuLearn, you will have a developed website which is working for a shop or an establishment in your neighborhood. 
നിങ്ങളുടെ വീട്ടിന് അടുത്തുള്ള ഒരു ചായക്കടയുടെ വെബ്സൈറ്റ് ആയിരിക്കും നിങ്ങൾ ഞാൻ കൊണ്ടാക്കുക ബട്ട് ഇറ്റ് ഷുഡ് ഹാവ് ഇറ്റ് വിൽ ഹാവ് എ വർക്കബിൾ മോഡൽ വിത്ത് യു ഇപ്പൊ കുറച്ചു മുമ്പ് സംബഡി ആസ്മി അബൌട്ട് ഹാൻഡ്സ് ഓൺ പ്രാക്ടിക്കൽ എക്സാക്ട്ലി ദ സെയിം തിങ് യു വിൽ ഹാവ് എ വർക്കബിൾ മോഡൽ ടു ഷോ ടു ദ വേൾഡ് ദാറ്റ് യു ഹാവ് ഡൺ ദിസ് Yes, sir. Sir, whether I need to work with, I need to join with a team and I need to work on it, right? It will not be like... If I, if I, if I tell you something about this, uh, it wouldn't be a right answer. It is yeah. all about experiencing it online. And I don't want to be an advocate or a marketing agent for Mulan here because <laughs> you have never done any campaign for Mulan in the past. All the 30,000 students came by word of mouth and organic. Uh, yes, so it is, it is just, I just want to tell you that... Uh, I don't want to create a campaign here. I just wanted to tell you about an opportunity that Mulan gives. Yes, it is sir. something which is available here online. Make use of it. Yes, sir. Sir, thank you, sir. Uh, there are a lot of other, other uh, platforms also available. Very good platforms are there. But yeah. what I am familiar with is Mulan. That's why I told you about Mulan. Yes. And what I represent as, a, as an industry body, GTEC is my body. So I, I, that's why I spoke about it in the session. Yeah. I don't um, um, say that that's the only option available. There are multiple options available now. Today, you are connected to the best of uh, things that happen in the world. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir, uh, for Thanks. spending your precious time with me. Thank you. My pleasure. Um, I think probably we'll wind up. Yeah, we have overshot on our time. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, thank you very much, sir, uh, for uh, sharing a lot of... Uh, I, you know wisdom about uh, 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 you know, uh, you know, all the changes and how to respond to it when i use the word uh, wisdom i you know, i probably wanted to uh, you know, expand on that for the benefit of all the people who um, as rigmar sir said today might uh, seem obvious but uh, you have to remember that you know uh, you know it comes from a person who has had a lot of experience uh, in the industry and is leading a few thousand uh in engineers who are uh, in uh, working in the industry so you know that uh, uh you know perspective and uh, you know where something is uh, you know coming from you know what is the source of your information that critical thinking is also a skill that we need to develop so you know i just wanted to expand on that so uh, you know it's been wonderful so thank you so once again i also want to thank all the participants who have you know come and attended and ask questions in fact so uh, thank you all i also like to thank my team members who supported me to uh, you know organize uh, uh, all this so thank you all i will also be you know posting the uh, uh, um, of, uh, in a link uh, for the attendance so that you can all get your participation Certainly. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, uh, I will be, it's my pleasure to participate in the pro programs like this. And uh, as you said, whatever we know or whatever we, we, we feel we know has to be shared. It has to be, again, I repeat the slogan, uh, democratization of knowledge and democratization of, of, of wisdom is what we should practice always. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, sir. So I have posted the link so you can all uh, use it too.